funny. <laughs> All right. If you're new to East Metro, every month I do a wonderful segment that gets the bar tab up like 20, 20 full called an update on the National Debt. So let's look at the raw numbers for this month. Kirk, power me through this. Our current debt right now has hit the maximum statutory debt limit of $16.7 trillion. Now lucky for us, even though we've gone four years with a trillion dollar budget deficit, we're actually gonna come in short of that this year for the first time in five years, and we're only gonna have $770 billion. Can I hear a round of applause? No, nothing out there? Still, that's what it's out like. 20 times the state debt, right? Or state annual, or biennial budget, it's incredible. We added $100 billion over the last month to the monetary base, which is all the money that's flowing in the economy. That's $3.4 trillion. And to give you a frame of reference, that was about a third of where it was uh, five years ago. Or three times where it was five years ago. Again, I'm just back, you know? Well, tonight what I wanna talk about is rising interest rates. Right? And it's a good segue from what we were just talking about, where the federal debt is. Usually I go into some kind of economic topic that's different, but I, I, I thought this would be very appropriate because I've been watching something the markets take place in the last month or two that's actually something I've been predicting for a while and I think is very devastating. I think this uh, is something that our congressmen are uh, not paying attention to closely. So when we started out the East Metro Tea Party, my first presentation was on what happens to a federal debt when interest rates go up. And that presentation was in April, and April is an interesting month. In April and May, we hit all-time record lows on Treasury security yields. All-time lows. Since then, we've had an incredible increase, and I want to explain why that's a big problem. So let me give a little background if you weren't here in April to let you understand what the federal budget looks like. So, next slide, Kurt. We spend about $3.54 trillion at the federal government level. Now, the three biggest programs, uh, I should say four biggest programs, are defense, which comes in at $615 billion, Medicare and Medicaid, which for easy terms, I'm just gonna put those together, equate to $853 billion. And then our social security uh, expenditures, $806 billion. Our net interest on debt right now is 256 billion. So with all other programs in the federal debt parks, uh, paying the IRS, that's the line I don't get rid of. All the other items on the federal budget, it just caps over one trillion dollars. Now remember, we're spending, overspending, by 770 billion dollars a month. So really. If we were to bounce a budget right now, we'd only have about $300 billion left to fund all other expenditures after you get rid of those big programs. Now, let's look at the big budget picture here. We have outlays, which are basically what the federal government calls as expenditures, and that's $3.54 trillion. And receipts, which is all the revenue coming from taxes to the federal government, equating to $2.77 trillion. So, in a good fiscal response bill, government, those two bars would be the same level. However, they're not, and they haven't been for a long time, and that means we have a $770 billion budget deficit. So let's explain what happens when you have a deficit. You come over to something called a treasury auction. Oh, next slide there, Kurt. Our $770 billion gets kicked over to treasury auction, so we can finance that, that budget deficit with uh, the sale of something called treasury securities. The U.S. Treasury acts as the buyer, I mean the seller in that uh, auction, and these auctions take place every week, by the way. And then the buyers of those securities are investors, which could be domestic, like institutional investors, or international, like the Chinese buying up some of our bonds. We also have, that we've seen in the recent uh, last couple of years, the Federal Reserve, through a program called Quantitative Easing, buy up some of our Treasury securities to the tunes of trillions of dollars a year, and that is through a program that is, equates to printing money out the air. Now, each treasury auction isn't just that budget deficit, as I represent up here. You have to keep in mind, the government never pays down its debt. What it does is it reissues debt that matures in the fiscal year. So let's take a quick look at fiscal year 2013. 
Now remember, I did this back in April when the budget deficit was gonna be over a trillion dollars. That's changed, so we've eliminated $300 billion that's gonna hit new interest rates this year, but we still have treasury bills which mature under a year term equate to $1.6 trillion that matures and will be reissued at whatever the interest rate is in the market. We have treasury notes, those are yields between one and 10 years that will actually uh, mature some point in the year and that's about 1.2 billion, or 1.2 trillion. It's very hard, you get billions and trillions mixed up all the time when you talk about the federal debt. There are no bonds that are maturing in fiscal year 2013, thank God. However, we have treasury insurance protected securities which match uh, the interest rate to inflation and $41 billion comes due with a grand total of $3.7 trillion in debt that e either is added through fiscal year 2013 or is matured during that period. Now we're in the last month of fiscal year 2013 and next uh, month in October, we start pulling the fiscal year. So in April, what I did is I showed what happens in over a three year period if rates were to go up to 5%. And if you can see here on the left side, the current interest payments at $2 or $256 billion would almost double to $490 billion, which is over there on the far right side in blue. In President Obama's budget, he assumes that defense spending will shrink to $572 billion in fiscal year 2015, I'm sorry, 16, and Social Security will be about $924 billion, which would mean in fiscal year 2016, we would have $907 billion left in the budget for every other program that there is out there if we were to balance the budget that year. By the way, that year, Medicare and Medicaid alone will be over a trillion dollars. Now I thought that was a, I did three scenarios when I've done this research and this is the most uh, easy, so to speak, of the three scenarios. But you're gonna find out scenario two might be the most likely. Because let's look at what happened to interest rates here recently. Over on the left side are the treasury bills. We talked about those are maturities of a year or below. That has actually stayed stagnant since the April auction at 13 basis points. It's only moved, it's not moved at all uh, in that time, and so we've had a 0% increase. However, when we go to the longer term uh, treasury notes, which have a uh, five year maturity on them, we actually went from 68 basis points, which I believe was a record low of all time, to 1.59%. That's a 134% increase in interest rates. Now remember again, when you have all that debt that matures or is added to the federal budget it is now being issued at this interest rate instead of this interest rate. Let's take the 10-year note, probably the most traded and uh, popular treasury security uh, in the U.S. It went from 1.76% in April to 2.59%. That's a 47% increase. And this is August uh, uh, issue, August's auction. September will be even higher when you look at the market rates on the current 10-year yield. And then the 30-year bond, the longest maturity we have right now at the federal debt, or federal budget, uh, was at 2.95% and now is at 3.6. That's a 22% increase right now, 22% increase in those short months. Waitresses are walking around the room if you guys need whiskey or beer. <laughs> I usually pass around a stress ball at this point. I forgot it. All right. The second scenario I came up with in my research was what happens if they go up to 9%? Well, using those rates, you know, 147% increase, the 47%, the 22%, we're more likely to come closer to this number overall. So in three years, we could see interest payments that start at $256 billion go all the way up to $760 billion. And using President Obama's numbers again, defense and Social Security, we'd have a balance left of $659 billion. And once again, Medicare and Medicaid will make up a budget expenditure of a trillion dollars in that year. And this is assuming we actually balance a budget. Imagine if we don't balance a budget in three years, how much worse this problem is. Now, has Jake got something that no one else does? And is he looking at these numbers that no one else is looking? No. Congress knows about this, actually. In a study in 2010, 
called Federal Debt and Interest Costs. They actually ran a scenario and looked at what would happen if interest rates went up. If you go to the next uh, slide here, let's see if I can read my little handwriting. They wrote, if interest rates for all newly issued Treasury securities were one percentage point higher in each year than the rates in the August baseline, net interest, net interest, hold on one second, very bad uh, print job there. Net interest payments would be higher in each year of the projection period. And they went on to talk about how higher interest rates would be devastating to the budget. Now, I talked to Congressman John Klein. I'm not a big fan of his, even though he supposedly comes from the same party that I do. And I talked to him about this very serious issue and why he would increase the debt ceiling. Folks, they know about this issue, and they are doing absolutely nothing about it. Okay. I'm in on a good note. <laughs> If you want more on this topic, contact me. Here's my information. We'll talk about it anytime. But we started this new thing at East Metro where uh, Craig, the sign guy, and Dave Benner, our monthly speakers, have their own reading list. And Craig's going to explain to you guys your homework and the prizes that are attached to it. But I'm going to show my five books that I would recommend all you guys read. If you've got a pen and paper and interest in this, this is what I would recommend on economics. So, Kirk, next slide. I would recommend Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. Capitalism and Freedom by Milton Friedman, very good book on fiscal policy. The Real Crash by Peter Schiff. And that's actually about what this current problem is, and he's, he's a pretty smart guy on that issue. Uh, Case Against the Fed by Murray Rothbard. And my favorite all-time book about the problems with centralized planning is Road to Serfdom by Hayek. Now, if you have read any of these, you might be up ahead of everyone else when Craig talks about the contest. Anyhow, these, the, my reading list, Bender's reading list, and Craig's will be available on Facebook, and we'll email them out if you didn't get it in this amount of time. 